right. So I use this mic that I have on or the one that's right here? Either one, doesn't matter. Okay, let's do it. Good morning again, everyone. Um, thank you for the awesome introduction. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you all for coming here. Um, I just feel really grateful to present um, things that I'm really passionate about. Um, so thank you. Um, let's see if we can get into this presentation. All right. Chaos. Actually, I'm not even going to introduce myself first. I, I want to see if I can show you guys some chaos um, that's here in Miami. Um, so if you can see behind the title, it is a, uh, it's actually a project. I don't know if you're familiar, if you can see this area right here. This is all, Bis this is a Biscayne Boulevard. Um, you'll probably notice these buildings, Bayfront Park right here. So this is just another view of the same thing. This is a project that I'm working on with, with somebody actually that's here in the room. Um, he's works at an architecture firm called Coda. Um, they're designing this amazing structure here. It's, again, it's Biscayne Boulevard. And this is Bayfront Park. This is actually a solar ring project. You might have heard about it. Um, but it's something that just got approved not too long ago, which is pretty exciting. Um, let's see if this will play. Let's see if so. Let's see if it works. I guess it won't play, but it's all good. So pretty much, <laughs> pretty much what the video was going to show you was the process of how this became this, which is the final rendering. So all of this is actually CGI. Um, it's all 3D computed uh, imagery. It doesn't exist, obviously. So what I wanted to explain is that, you know, chaos is, you know, is seen as something that um, is very like bad or unorganized or crazy. Um, but I feel like with chaos, you can actually turn it into something that you like, organize it in a way to turn it into something beautiful, which was this project. Um, if you go back and see all of this craziness, I mean, if you look at this, this is just a 3D model with, consisting of several different pieces, lights, um, we got people that are in here, the building structures, it's just a whole big mess of this project. And being able to organize it in your way to turn into something beautiful is, that's pretty much what I do for my career. Um, it's how my whole life has been. Um, so I feel like this topic is something I'm really excited to talk about. Um, so with the introduction, my name is Aziz Bakari. I'm here because I like to give presentations. Um, you can find me at, at my name, at Aziz Bakari on Instagram. And it's the platform that I do most of my sharing. Um, so everyone always asks me, like, where are you from? Um, and it's a, for me, it's a loaded question because I can answer that in so many different ways. It's like, where are you from? Where were you born? What's your background? Um, where were you raised? So I wanted to just set the record straight and just get it, you know, a good, good way to explain it to you guys. Um, so I was born in New York, Staten Island, New York. Um, I was raised in Ohio. Um, my background is from Nigeria, where my family's from. So I was first generation born here with my brother in the States. And um, I last lived in Washington, D.C. So that's my where are you from question answer. Um, this is my father. Um, growing up, I always wanted to be like him. Uh, he moved from the States when he was, or sorry, he moved from Nigeria when he was 17 years old. Um, to, to try to make a life for my brother and I, and my mother as well. Like, all my family, uh, we're all engineers, except for me. Everyone, like my uncle, my dad, my brother, my grandfather, all engineers. Um, so growing up, I wanted to be like them, except for that aspect. I wasn't really a fan of engineering so much. Um, but my dad has done some things. Um, he's got featured in um, CNN Money Magazine for having um, a top, I think, 100 job 
in, in the U.S. He's a civil engineer, and you know, this is him back in the day. <laughs> I told him to send me photos, and uh, he didn't send them to me until this morning. <laughs> and I was like, all right, it's too late. I got all the old pictures, so he doesn't know I put this one in there. <laughs> um, so let's see, this is me. You know, I was, I was cute at one time. <laughs> My brother, <laughs> my brother was awesome. He's still awesome today. Um, but it was just us two mainly growing up. And this is how I looked in, in, um, when we were in New York. I was growing up in a, a school called like PS44 or something. And I still have this little thing. I love it. Um, this is my brother and I when we were in Nigeria. 1992, I was four or five years old. Um, I had visited the country and in Lagos, and I just remember, I actually remember some scenes in my head. I remember like riding a horse, um, just doing, we were there for about a month. I remember like chasing chickens and everything. So it was just like such an amazing place for me to, to say that I'm Nigerian, you know, it really makes me proud. Um, so this is another photo of my brother and I, you know, back in the day, um, just bringing back memories. Of, and I'm trying to share you guys with my entire story so you can see how chaotic my life is. We haven't even got there yet. Um, <laughs> so this is my dad and I in New York. It's one of my first times traveling. I didn't really grow up going to many places. You know, I was raised in Ohio, mostly stayed in Ohio. Um, vacation for me really, I didn't really know what the, the word meant at the, when I was growing up. But I think around you know, high school, graduation, I went on like my first trip with my dad. And you know, I was just, we were always just hanging out, you know, we got pretty close. He's, he's, I bring it back to him because like, he was really the, the driving factor that instilled motivation into me. It was never a question, like if I wanted to do something, I would just do it. Um, and if it was really for me, the motivation was automatically kicking in. Um, so this is uh, him right here, he's a, he's a soccer coach. Um, He's just really involved in the community, doing a lot of things for the community. Uh, he's, he's the most selfless person I know. Um, so this is me growing up in high school. I was a track athlete. I loved running. I still kind of like it um, today. <laughs> I'm, I'm not as young as I <laughs> used to be. But this was, this was all I cared about in high school. So I share with you this because I want you guys to see you know, I didn't have a set <clears throat> intention growing up. Like, I didn't know what I wanted to do really until college time. In high school, all I cared about was track, um, uh, music. If you guys, any musicians in here are familiar with um, FL Studio, which is a music making program. Um, and I was, I was pretty like involved in music. It was, my dream, you know, I was, I remember summer times being 15 years old, you know, my friends going out to party and like hang out, I would be in my room just making music. So I ended up going pretty far with music and, you know, I got featured in some magazines like Source Magazine, Fader and such, but um, when we were growing up, <laughs> that really wasn't an option for education. It's like you either grew up to be an engineer, um, a lawyer, or a doctor, or a failure. So that was like the joke. <laughs> that was the joke for us growing up. It's like, those are, the, those are your options. Um, so I knew in, in high school, I started to understand that I was pretty good at drawing, like hand drafting with a T-square, which this is what a T-square is right here. Um, just like drawing um, different objects for classes. I remember just being pretty good at it. And I was pretty good at math as well. So. With those two in my mind, I figured I would become an architect because I thought that's what architects do. Um, and this is me graduating uh, high school with my mind set on being an, an architect because I needed something to study. That's what, that's what our, you know, pretty much growing up, that's what we knew. We weren't gonna go to college and get a degree. So this is where my visualization career starts in Ohio. And this is me, uh, first day of, I think, 
not first day, but I'm just gonna act like it was, first day of architecture. Um, when I went to school, I didn't know if I wanted to be an architect or graphic design because I was actually good at drafting as such, but I also enjoyed making like flyers and logos and things like that. So I ended up choosing uh, architecture, but the first day of orientation, I actually had a graphic design major. I switched the next day because it was way too conceptual for me. And then I got into the architecture program. That was actually more conceptual, and I didn't know until I was accepted. So I was like, I'm stuck, you know, I'm just gonna stay. Um, but the thing I liked about architecture was that, you know, I just love to present my, my projects. I love making the graphics. Um, I love laying out the boards. And that was really what I cared about. I didn't really care too much about the design. Um, so I was really more about the presentation of the visuals. And so these are some of my previous projects growing up and um, I mean, not growing up, but going through college. Um, this is an old project called Fake Scapes. We designed houses in Revit. I learned how to use Revit and Rhino back then. And this is a couple more renderings that I did. We were very heavily involved in hands-on, 3D modeling, 3D printing, uh, physical model making, laser cutters. Um, so that got my background through this. And I remember this, pr this project specifically, you know, I had used the laser cutter to just help me design different, area, different programs of, you know, public, private, and active zones. So we were able to use this technology to create um, architectural elements in, in different programming. Um, just a couple other projects as well. And I was still had the graphic design in my head, so you can see that um, I was making flyers as I was going through uh, university. These are some of the flyers that I had made. Um, so I still had the passion for the graphic design, but I was like doing both at the same time, architecture and the graphic design. So I didn't really know what I wanted. I just had so many things running through my head at this time. And um, I was also, to add more chaos, I would uh, study web design. So I started doing web design. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I just had fun creating, you know. And this was, at the time, I had decided, you know, become a major in architecture, minor in visual, uh, visual communication design. And so you can see, um, let me go back, this is a graduating class, not big at all, the architecture program, um, I decided I had to stand out. So made a 3D model of a house so my family could see me as I was uh, walking, you know. Um, these two guys, um, they play a big part in the story that I'm telling because um, one of them actually, he's, he lives here uh, today. Um, he, he also, he lives in D.C. But I'll mention them again um, during the story. This is my brother, the engineer. He followed my father's footsteps. <laughs> um, so I, I put this quote here at this time because this became my mantra for life. Balance is key. Um, I was going through a lot at the time because I had just graduated. I couldn't find a job. And I just needed some sort of like motivation to keep me going. I said, balance is key. You know, whatever you do in life, just keep your balance. Um, continue like pushing forward, you know, have fun on the side as well, just balance everything out. That's what I thought this meant to me. Um, but you'll see through the chaos that changes, that mindset changes for the better. Um, so after school, still looking for a job, decided to continue in, um, doing more graphic design. I was getting accepted to competitions and, and I, I got uh, selected for competitions. I was making um, what's called menus for companies. I mean, that's what I was doing. I had a degree, I just didn't know. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't find architectural jobs. So I used my other graphic design skills and I started to see a transition towards wanting to be a business owner. Um, I started making, I made my first invoice, you know, using my, my logo at the time. And this was to a restaurant for $950 you know, which to me, I felt rich, you know? <laughs> like, I was like, forget everything. Like, if I can make $950 sitting in my room making menus, you know, I was living the dream. 
And uh, <laughs> so I just was like, I continued doing this. And then at the same time, I had the pressure of, you know, do I go get my architecture actual license? Um, so I, I got accepted into Syracuse, um, but I went there for a visit and they told me how much it costs and it just wasn't working for me because I didn't have those funds. <laughs> um, so I said, let me get on LinkedIn and just promote myself. Let me become, you know, a professional or whatever. So I started studying different poses for uh, LinkedIn. You know? <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I just had to just, I didn't have much coaching, so these are my poses. <laughs> I had an okay photo, a blurry one, and I was like, let me just keep trying. And I was that guy who would wear a suit on top and shorts on the bottom. So, you know, you, it, it, Skype interviews is just easy, you know. So this was, I ended up going with this photo I think I had to Photoshop it a little bit, um, but you know that was this was the this was like the chaos I was going. Through. I didn't know what to do. I'm just like just doing everything, and so to add more chaos, I decided let me try something else. So I became a, a web instructor. So I started teaching high school kids how to make websites. If you guys are familiar with like Joomla, HTML, HTML CSS, all that. I started to teach them, but at that time I wasn't very knowledgeable in those subjects. Um, so, I, you know, I, I still made it happen and they loved it. Uh, these, these people up here are amazing. This guy, he, he's just an amazing guy. He has his own business now, just teaching, uh, teaching IT, has several clients and everything. So I learned from him, but he was very appreciative for me being there because the kids could relate to me because he was a little bit older and he wasn't able to connect with them as well. But because of me being there, the kids were able to like connect with me and we were able to talk about things that younger people would talk about. And so it was just a great time, a really good learning experience. It's called Tech Course. Um, so during that time as well, I was still um, trying to look for work, you know, with the architecture industry. Um, I just could not, again, find anything it was a really hard time. My dad's an engineer and he works in the industry. He was able to even push my name out to people and I still couldn't get anything. So this slide is actually just showing how every day I would sit there sending emails um, to companies, you know, following up, um, setting up informational interviews, which was my secret at the time. I would pretty much say, hey, I wanna learn about your company. Can I come in and secretly bring my resume and my portfolio? and ask you questions, and at the end, can you look at my stuff? Um, so that was my method, and um, none of those things worked, but finally, you know, I, I had one opportunity after sending, or after 421 days, you know, of looking, it was kind of depressing because I, I thought I was, you know, I got pretty good grades in school, I had a degree and everything, and I was like, why does no one want to hire me, you know? Um, and you know, sending out applications, over 320 applications for a position. And eventually I got selected by one company and extremely grateful. I got my letter um, from HOK, which is an international architecture firm. And I got that job 2011 and I had been applying for so long. I finally got something. Once I, I got the email in the call, I just remember screaming out loud. It's like going home, telling my dad, like, I got a job. I, didn't, I hit the number, I don't know why, but I mean, it was like, to me, I think it was the first time I had ever seen three zeros after a number <laughs> and, and my name on the same letter. So that's why I was so excited. Um, they sent me this letter and I read it and I was just like, I was like, my life is set. Like I said, I'm finally accepted. You know, I thought that my value was in what someone else would say about me. Um, that's how I, I grew up. I thought that that's how life was, you know. Once you get a job, like, you're somebody, um, which I was wrong. But, you know, after that, I moved to, after getting the letter, I moved to D.C. and started my first full-time career job. It's me in D.C., you know, just living the dream. I'm just like this 21 or 22-year-old dude. Um, just like, I felt amazing just being in 
the nation's capital, being in D.C., and just going by the Washington Monument to go to work um, was amazing. These two guys helped play a huge role in, in my career. Um, <laughs> getting the opportunity, I, I was able to work in a small department in a big firm. HOK, that office had over 100 people. Um, there were only three people in the visualization department, so my tasks were to create 3D models, 3D printing, and um, 3D renderings. And so I had not, had, had not just one mentor, but I had two mentors, which was amazing. This guy's still my mentor today, uh, Yark. He's a great guy uh, from Poland. Colin, he was like underneath him, so he started the department. He hired Colin maybe two or three years later. But it, this guy was actually working from the bottom at HOK. He would clean the garages and everything. But no one knew he was creative. And so this was my clean desk. Um, so these guys, uh, <laughs> Colin sat here, Yark would sit here, and um, these are clean things on my desk. I think I was trying to make a joke, but whatever. Um, so this is where I would do and create like these type of images in the back you can see. Um, I had two screens for the first time. I was just so excited, like, oh, I can see so much. I can create so much. Um, once again, my dad came to visit me, which was great. I could show him everything that I had dreamed of had come true, and I, you know, I'm just living this dream now. So I felt like you know, everything is perfect. Um, I was just, again, living the dream, doing different things, exploring uh, DC. I was able to do 3D, 3D making, 3D model making, physical pr 3D printing, mentoring um, other high school students, and it was just a great time for me. Um, again, making flyers, just doing all these things I had learned you know, feeling that the chaos was coming together, you know, bringing all of my different talents um, together. And these are some of the images that we created. Uh, this was actually the first one that I was able to work on at HOK, um, which was a project in Qatar. Um, there's another view of it as well. This is just another high-rise tower. The guy, Yarek, who I had mentioned earlier, he was an amazing artist and still is. Um, these are some more images. Um, this one I wanted to share specifically because um, creating the images is not just like making a photo. Uh, creating the images for me is like telling a story. So if a client would come to me and say, okay, we need this building rendered, it's not just like we take the building and then make an image. You have to really, my goal is to put the person in this uh, atmosphere and, and make them feel like they're there. Um, so telling a story of this is what I love to do. And so on the right you will see just some more activities we would do, 3D, more 3D printing and creating like really, you know, beautiful physical models. So doing the things I would do in school but getting paid for it now. Um, just some more examples to share, show. So we see how we create the 3D rendering but we can also supplement that with physical uh, 3D printed models. Um, it just helps you get the scale down of the, the project that you're, that you're in. Um, I had an opportunity to work on really nice big projects like Union Station in DC. The first time I got to work on a project that was published, um, just seeing it in the news just made me feel really proud. Um, so this was also the time that I began picking up a camera. For the first time I picked up a camera um, because the office needed someone to go and take pictures of the architecture of the sites. Um, I didn't know anything about a camera. The first time I took a photo, it looked like this. It was just blue. And I didn't understand you know, what white balance was at that time. So I, that I decided to begin learning photography. Um, so you can see me just playing around, using my iPhone at the time, um, taking photos of flowers, which was like everyone did at that time and some architectural sites like Smithsonian and such. Um, so then people started noticing my photography and they wanted to pay me for photography. And I was like, amazing, perfect. Um, I love that. The only problem, well, not problem, but the only thing that, that I learned was that I'm actually like, cap I started doing weddings, so I, I was actually taking photos people would have forever. And that put a lot of pressure on me 
And not only that, but the pressure of the event itself being there. Um, this first photo I wanted to share because um, this was my coworker at the time of HOK, and this was her, her uh, fiance. She actually, she asked me to, to do the wedding. It's very short, not too many people. Um, but the thing was, he was actually termin terminally ill with a, a disease. I'm not sure what it was, but I didn't know this. So the only reason they wanted to do is they wanted to capture photos before he passed away. So, you know, I was told this at the wedding, like in the middle of the shoot. And that really messed, kind of messed with my head. You know, I was, it made me realize like, you know, what you're doing like is really important for the people. And, you know, her father walked up to me in the shoot and he just like handed me a hundred dollar bill. I mean, I got, I got paid $500 for this and he gave me an extra 100 and I was just like really touched, you know, that they would ask me to do something like that for them. So um, that's when I started to realize like photography for people, it means a lot, you know. Um, so I, I started to get more and in, more um, inspired to capture more weddings, even though I was getting tired, I was by myself shooting weddings and these moments, these, these, uh, this couple here, they were actually from Pompano. And so I lived in DC at the time, which you could not get married. You could not have same sex marriage in Florida at that time. So they went to DC and that's why I, I met them. They, somehow I ended up moving back here to Florida and we came back in contact and they were just saying great things. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and this was just another, um, my first photo for uh, a class. Didn't know this, this lady was just by, walking by Tidal Basin where they do the cherry blossoms. And um, she was just laying down and I needed a photo for an assignment. And I just said, hey, can I take a photo of you with your bike and everything, just laying there. And she was, she was like, sure. So this ended up being like my go-to photo for DC because you can see the monument was under construction at the time. I had my tripod with me and it was just like, I, I was learning more about photography and enjoying it. I started to take more photos, um, take, taking uh, portraits, um, friends, babies and toddlers and other portraits of friends. And I started to get paid to travel to do this. And I was just really, excited because I was still working at HOK, but in my free time, I was doing this. So I, I really don't know how I was doing those things, but um, eventually, you know, I started doing more and more and people started leaving me reviews, having me travel around to take their portraits. And at that time, I decided like, let me just start selling art too. So I started to sell art, um, crazy shirt. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that's the photo from before you can see. Um, so it made me go back to the thought of, you know, what do I do? Do I continue being, you know, this photographer who goes around and takes photos of people? Or do I continue working at HOK? Um, and at that time as well, my two mentors decided they wanted to start their own business. So they invited me to come along, but at the same time, they said, you can stay and learn more and hire people as well. So I decided to stay at HOK, focus on that. But, you know, it was really tough because I needed to change because my whole reason for joining HOK was to become a really good artist. And with my two mentors leaving, I didn't have a chance to have time to become better because now that I'm the senior of the department, I have to manage people. And so I couldn't spend time on my renderings and making them better. I had to stay and manage. So the friends that I had shown you in the previous slides, I was able to hire one as my like artist, uh, junior artist. But also at the time, the reason why this was tough was because um, the company didn't really, I don't, I don't know if I wanna say respect, um, they didn't really acknowledge my, my age, I guess, I was still like 23 or 24 and I was running the visualization department. So a lot of decisions, I didn't really have much power. And at, again, I wasn't learning to the level that I wanted to. So I started thinking, you know, 
Do I want to apply to my favorite firm, D-Box? Um, also, another one was Mir, which, but they were in, um, in Norway. I wasn't ready to go international. Apply to Google and um, to create a department. I don't, I, there was no position at Google. I just wanted to work for Google. It was just my dream. Like, I just was looking for every, any way to contact someone, you know, just to get, get in. Or do I want to start a full-time business with the photography and the rendering in DC? That one was tough because I didn't feel like I had the level of visualization skills to start my own business. I felt photography was pretty good, but the 3D, I just wasn't that comfortable. And so, you know, my decision was to apply to D-Box and I got accepted, I got hired. I was the first uh, visualization artist hired there. So it was, um, it's my card. I was so excited, like it was a dream. I, I was like, oh my gosh, I get to live next to the beach. Um, I had, you know, packed up everything I owned. It was all in that box. No, I had way more stuff. Um, but just the first time I let my passion uh, take me around the world, I didn't care where I was. You know, I just wanted to do what I loved. So it took me to Miami Beach, and it's me representing my school, Ohio State. Um, just showing my friends being on the beach was just a dream. Um, and this is the moment in my life where I started to learn about uh, light. And this, was very, this is very important because um, light is what, I mean, it's in photography as well, but it's what allowed me to create visualizations. Understanding light and just knowing how a camera works, those are probably the two most important things that have fueled the visualization that I do today. Um, so these are some more examples of just understanding light more specifically, Miami's light, because Miami's light is, is very different from the DC light and the Ohio light that I was exposed to. Um, that wasn't a pun, but I guess it worked. Um, so this is like being on the beach. Just, I'll show you guys the image from this photo, but just understanding Miami's light, the sunsets, the clouds, you know, all of this type of lighting for me, understanding shadow, and these are things that I started to learn as I was um, an employee of D-Box. And so I was able to be exposed to this type of atmosphere. Just some more, these are all just like, you know, cell phone shots from un just different projects and, and areas. And, um, so funny enough, this was the first rendering that I was able to work on at D-Box, which was a project in DC. So it was, it was really strange, you know, that they set me up like that. I didn't know if it was a joke or what. Um, but this is uh, 1500 first. Um, this is in, I think, uh, Noma in DC. Uh, you can see, I was just extremely happy to be able to do stuff like this now. Um, and if you look in this area, just creating these type of even artificial light, understanding how to create the reflection from this onto this from the clouds and all of that is just, it messes with your head when you think about the project you're working on. Um, and, and this is just a further out view of a rendering as well. So everything you see is not real. It's all 3D. Um, the people are photographed in totally other different situations. They're cut out, painted to fit your image. Um, some of this in the background is photography, um, but you'll see that you alter the photography to fit your image more than altering your image to fit the photography. And this is another project. This is local here. This was one of the second or third images I was able to work on. This is Lincoln Road. If you're familiar with the, the, the church, I think it's around Drexel and Lincoln Road. Um, they actually have a, might have a banner out there right now, um, but I remember going to the site, uh, sorry, going to the site for this. Um, the, the, the owner of D-Box was with us. He comes to Miami often, and he actually lived there from when, when I was working there. So we got to go with him and do photography for this, and just learning from him and seeing how he shoots. He had his headphones on, he's just walking around with his tripod, ignoring everything. And everyone's like, oh, what are you doing, making a movie? He just, he's just so in the zone, focused on capturing, you know, and he inspired me from, 
from doing that. And the photo I had shown from before with just the, the beach and the sun, that was from this. Um, so this was like one of the first times I got to go to the site and shoot the image for the background. And so this, this was a Jade Signature. They have Jade Ocean and Jade Beach. So at the time, this, this wasn't here. Jade Signature wasn't there. So in order to capture the image for the background, I, would, I went to Jade Ocean and went to the top and captured the sunrise. And so, you know, Photoshopped the water to make it blue and such. And um, you might have seen this image around, but it's, it's very unique because it's actually one of the most simpler images I've able, been able to work on um, because the people that are here actually photographed in New York um, and they were actually photographed just for the image. So we took the lighting from this rendering, created a, a little mini studio in New York so the people were lit from the same direction, placed them in the image so they looked as if they were in it. I'll show you guys a higher resolution um, later, but that's how the, the image was created. Um, this was a, these are all first time things. I've never done these things before. Uh, first time um, ha being in a rendering myself. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just cool to be able to put myself in there and see, you know, oh, we're making photorealistic renderings. I'm able to be in this. Um, this is a project in, um, I think it's Seychelles. I, I'm not 100% sure. But um, bringing this, this project, this uh, concept of firsts, um, this was the first time I started to do like international travel. And this was very important for me because being from Ohio mostly, I didn't get exposed to a lot of things in the world. And starting to travel internationally let me understand how a lot of things work, a lot of culture, a lot of architecture, light, so many different aspects. And that my first international trip was you know, besides when I was younger, um, was to uh, Croatia. So I had a friend that lived in New York. She really loved Game of Thrones, I think it was. And so there was the King's Rock there. She was like, I want to go to Croatia. I was like, she said, can you come? I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so this was like my first time just getting that exposure to international uh, vibes, let's say. And, you know, and it started to bring more of this international culture to me as well. And I started to have opportunities. You know, I really wanted to work for Google. And I didn't get to work for Google, but being at D-Box, I had a chance to create images for them. So it was like a full circle thing, you know, being able to have Google come back into my life. Um, it was like a reunion. <laughs> so this, was, this is the, head, the headquarters for, um, they had a concept to create the headquarters for Google. And just be able to work for like, create images for like a big company uh, really humbled me and I was really excited. Um, and this is a, just an article that they had put in time about uh, Silicon Valley and all of the technology. Um, and again, the chaos is I still have this like knack for photography. I'm still loving photography. And so I was um, just given opportunities to shoot concerts of my favorite artists like Sam Smith and Kendrick Lamar and, and Elton John, Maxwell and you know, Lil Wayne, just, I didn't know what to do. I was like, do I continue photography or, or 3D? And the problem was at, at D-Box, I really didn't get the opportunity to express my photography as much as I wanted to. So I found myself doing these type of things on the side. And um, I was like, what do I do, you know, do I, start my business now, finally, you know. I feel like I've accomplished my goal, which was just to create photorealistic visualization, really high quality. That's my goal, just high quality. That's all I cared about. And so I had achieved that, and, and that made me finally decide to start my own business. And I reached out to the community, helped me with my logo. I don't know what to do. Um, and these are just some of the concepts for the logos, and I chose none of them. And this was what it ended up being. I just created my own, you know, just simple, using my name, um, Aziz Bakar Studios, without the line on the A. And so then I was like, this is perfect. I can combine all my loves together, photography, architecture, renderings, 
you know, I can shoot um, events. I was shooting with corporate companies, getting really great opportunities, um, you know, shooting with Nike and Red Bull and, and other companies, like corporate companies, Bayer, um, getting some opportunities locally with Miami Magazine. They're really helpful for my photography as well. And just getting to go to cool events, you know, seeing Serena Williams, shooting for beer, just doing things about high quality and detail, you know, just to make the bottle look fresh, you know, we spray the bottle with like the solution and then just, it, and getting that shot up close, it was just made me understand, okay, that's how they create that effect. Um, this is uh, Vayner, I wish I met a gentleman here, he used to work for them. Um, so I got to do events for them as well, shooting with Airbnb as well. And so this was the first rendering that I did um, after leaving D-Box. The problem was I thought that getting one client meant I'm good, you know? There's nothing else I have to do. And so I had worked on this project. This was um, with Terra Group. Um, at the time I had my business, I, I didn't have any other body, anyone working with me. This was by myself. So I was just so distraught because I did everything. I had to talk with the client. I had to organize the contracts. I had to make the rendering, make the changes, do everything. I realized I was putting myself back into the cycle of chaos that I was in when I left. And it wasn't what I wanted. But, you know, this was the less, these are the lessons that I learned from this first project. Um, this is Grove at Grand Bay. If you've seen those twisting towers in uh, Coconut Grove, I believe. Um, so I was commissioned to do five interior renderings for the penthouse. It was like 28 point something million. And I was just like, can I have just one, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, they didn't decide, they didn't give me one. But, um, but this here was, um, I don't know if it'll play, but it's a video, uh, it's not gonna play, but I'll show you guys later. It's a, just an animation of showing the space. Um, and so working with Terra Group, gave me an opportunity to actually work with the architect of that building, which was Bjark Engels Group Big. And so doing the renderings gave me an opportunity to do a film with them. So I created, this is what made me get into drones. So I was able to create a film with them, but it won't play, no problem. <laughs> but the film is just like a drone video showing like how starting in one place brings me to the next and to the next thing. And it's all just driven by passion me doing what I really like and it's giving me more opportunities and now like it's it's in my business which I I'm really I'm really grateful for that and um, so this brings me to another just a really crazy story um, I was walking around just taking photos and you might have seen this building um, it's on Miami Beach uh, I forget I think it's Park Park Avenue Park Street um, but I was walking around practicing photography and you know, using a tilt shift lens for the first time, which allows your architectural, allows your buildings to prevent keystoning and lets the buildings look like they're straight vertical. So I was just going around taking photos, practicing, and I decided to put it on my website. Um, and somehow people saw this photo all over and there was a artist, Nat Natalie de Coste, she was actually going to be traveling to Miami Beach for Art Basel. So a company contacted me about this photo. They said, oh, we're having our party here. Can we use this photo for, your, or for our invitations? I said, yeah, for sure, but just invite me to the party. <laughs> um, so I said, everything worked out. And at the party, I ended up meeting this artist. She's like an amazing artist, world renowned. Her art is in the, the Paris uh, airport. So this is like a pivotal point for me because I'm learning that I have to have a team. I can't do this by myself. If I want to work with other people, if I want to you know, be recognized, I can't do everything myself. Um, but the reason why I, noticed, I mentioned her is because she was so friendly at the party. She, I told her I really wanted to go to Paris and she said, you know, anytime you can come down. She hosted me my first time let me stay in her studio. It was just an amazing thing. And the only reason I was able to have the opportunity happen at that moment was because I was still being passionate about what I love, like taking photos, 
Um, and also, I learned about team in this moment because I was invited to the party, they needed a photographer, and I knew I can't do both. I can't take pictures and meet people. So this is the first time I actually hired a photographer to be working with me. And so these are some of the photos from the event. This is a few years ago, there are Basel. Um, but I learned like by doing what I love and also helping other people do what they love, like it really just pushes things forward. It's part of the purpose that I feel I'm living. And this is just some of the, the features they were putting it, you know, in some magazines in Vogue and Vogue. And this is Natalie here. That's me. Um, it was just like a, a crazy opportunity how this happened. This fueled my, my passion for international travel more. It made me realize I need to explore and see what's out there. And so all of these areas you can see um, on the, the world map, uh, the ones in uh, red are the places that I had already explored today. And then the ones in blue are just places that I'm planning on going because for me, exploring, it just allows me to absorb more and learn more and also visualize better. Um, and I can still have my passion for high quality without limitations. That's the whole uh, purpose behind my business is that I don't want to be limited to just one office. I don't want to be limited to, um, I really, I don't want any limitations. So everything is a virtual business. Um, my, the people that work with me, they're all over the world. Like my team right now, it's mostly international, but we all work together. We're on our own team, on, own time. We're not limited to just a nine to five, which for me, it was hard because I would be looking out the window and just seeing, you know, nature, which was my biggest driver. I couldn't be part of it um, because I was just, you know, forced to be stuck in a certain situation. Um, so that's when I actually started to become um, a mentor to more interns. So high school interns in Miami-Dade, they had reached out and I had an opportunity to share with them photography and these other, you know, drones and such. So this was like my connection to help them get connected as well. Um, they wanted to grow and learn how to do these creative things and this was like my opportunity to give me more time by having a team, it allowed me to have more time to do things like this and to, you know, just go around and, and meet people and, and, and just help more people. Um, so it, this whole international drive also allowed me to have more clients that are not just in the States, or sorry, not just in um, Miami. This is a project for uh, an interior design company in, um, in Toronto. And so this, it was like the first project I was able to do with the team. And it allowed me to just focus on the end quality. Um, so now I have a team which helps me model, but then at the end of the day, I get to do what I love, which is the actual rendering. And so this is an example of just one of those. These are a couple more shots. These are all uh, CGI, all 3D. Um, working with interior designers is just great because they have the detail and they pay attention to the things I like. I love detail. Um, just if you could zoom into this and see later there's even like, you know, rust spots on the metal. Um, you can see the planks here, you know, everyone is different. The, the treading is different. The reflection highlights are different on each one. So when I look at things, I I am very detailed, like I'm, it's, it's like a nerdy thing, but I love it. Um, and you know, even wrinkles in the chair, just these, these type of things, it's like you start to see the imperfections in our world. And I, I, my goal is to recreate the imperfections in these images. Um, for this one, it's another space, same project. Um, but we're, we're using some of the aspects of photography with uh, your depth of field. So, you know, being able to set up a camera in the actual model, you, you're able to see, you know, what f-stop you're using, what zoom, you know, which lens. It's like I have any lens that I want and that I can use and just put in here. And, and this is another image from the same project, just another viewpoint. And with this one, um, it's, it's really about this light that's coming in and just filling this space, making you feel like you could be sitting there um, and just using the real environment to improve 
the visual. So with this whole, I'm going back to this balance is key thing. If you remember, I thought balance was key. I changed that. <laughs> you know, I was like, no, it's, it's really not the balance. Um, so I'm going to read this. I changed my, my mantra to, like, my life seems to be an imbalanced be imbalanced in a positive and chaotic way, but understanding the imbalance while managing and creating harmony of my life's aspects is key, um, versus just saying balance is key. Um, so understanding that there are imbalances, understanding that there may be many things, but finding a way to harmonize that together and accept it, but cater it to the way that you want is key to me. And a little thumbs up. Um, and it started to make me understand that I felt that my purpose was to showcase like how beautiful the world can be. And by doing that through visualization, through 3D renderings, through photography and videography. And so this is the purpose that I'm serving these days. I really got it. And I started to get into architectural photography after coming to that point and understanding these are all, I think most of these are in Miami. Um, I ended up just, just going crazy with the photography and trying to showcase. This is when I started to share more with the community. And I started a page called Look Up Miami because I liked the idea of everyone look, always wanted to look up, you know, and look up for, look for the opportunities that are here. And I started a personal challenge to share every day on Instagram for a whole year. And, you know, I just actually completed it about a couple weeks ago. Um, these are some more areas and you know getting some these are some of the posts from instagram um, so this was just sharing every day i just decided i needed to share you know because i was just keeping everything to myself <laughs> um, and this is actually the last photo from the 365 um, series which uh, was taken by george right here um, and it was just nice to, to just really see everything come together for a year and just be able to accomplish that goal. And a lot of things came out of that, you know. I wanted to share because I felt that I wasn't living up to that purpose that I was talking about. And by doing, by doing all this sharing, I received like so many opportunities. I was able to, you know, work with Google because of this. You know, they gave me a phone. I mean, I got, <laughs> I got, I love the phone, it's amazing. <laughs> I took most of these with the phone, you know. Um, there's just a lot of things that happened. Like I met so many creative people. It was really just perfect. Um, so I just wanted to end with show, showing you guys more examples of what we do, the 3D visualizations. Um, this is sort of what we do to practice, to make like things look real. Um, can anyone guess like which one is a photo? If you want to just say left or right, because um, one of them is a photo, one of them is 3D. And I want you guys to try to guess. So just yell left or right, if you, whatever you think. Right is the photo. I actually forgot, let me look, hold up. Um, okay, so left is the photo. Um, the really the only reason I know because the yes the towels because this this is such a, a natural organic flowing thing is just you know draped over and and right here you can see that you know it's, it's yeah, exactly too perfect um, but you can see a lot of the other aspects of this one like the not so perfect edge here um, you know the light coming in is very similar but this is how we practice. Um, we take real photos and we try to recreate it. And it really helps you pay attention to the details. And I'm, now I'm very good at seeing, you know, if it's a rendering or not because nothing is perfect, you know. Um, just a lot of these imperfections is what I look at every day. This was a photo that was in, um, I think, Architectural Digest, but we recreated it. So this is the rendering of that same space. So this is just more of the practice that we do to you know, set the mood, make it feel as if you're there. That's my goal is to make the photorealistic visualization. Um, and I'm also, 
like I was saying, ending. This is the, one of the most recent projects that we finished in Brooklyn, in uh, Cobble Hill. This is a photo of the project on Amity Street. And, and now, uh, this is the rendering of the building. So, none of this was here when, when I went to the site. You know, it was just empty construction spot. So, they just sent the photos like a couple weeks ago, and I was just really happy to see it looked close, at least, you know, to the building. Um, and, you know, this was, this was the hero shot for the project. Again, all CGI, and it's a lot of fun things to do in creating these type of images. Being able to go to the site, take photos of the background to understand and feel like what it feels like to be in that space, understanding the climate, temperature, all of that really is instilled into the final image. Um, these are some more. Uh, this is actually my, very, my favorite image because of just the way that the light's coming through the space and you know, just hitting this little toy. This is the playroom. Um, this is the exterior night view. A lot of details, you know, putting people into the room. You know, a lot of people will make a rendering for a building and every single window is the same. You know, if you just gotta think about in reality, like people are gonna be living in this place. Everyone has different lights, um, doing different things. Some people don't even live there. Some people aren't there, they rent it out maybe. Um, some people like their windows closed, some people like it open. Um, bikers, everything, just all of this stuff you have to think about when trying to create the story. And I just feel so grateful to be able to do that type of stuff. Um, a lot of people may not notice it when they see the image, but hopefully now when you see images, you can kind of think about it. Um, so these are also, uh, this is the photo of the space now, and this was the rendering. So we were pretty close to what it was supposed to look like, which was really fun to see. Um, of course, things change over the course of like when, when the final uh, plans get printed, some little details might change, but this was our, the rendering of it. So all 3D on the right and the photo on the left. Um, another fun aspect, just put it, you get to choose the can type of candles you want, you know, <laughs> Dipty Q candles, you know, high quality, you know, luxury candles. You can set the mood by choosing these little, um, the props for the spaces. Um, another, uh, the other bathroom, this is the master bathroom. Um, this is the photo, and then this is the uh, rendering on the right side. Um, a couple other spaces, this is the photo on the left, and this is the rendering on the right side of the kitchen. Um, there's some other things though, sometimes with the views, uh, a lot of clients will want to cheat the view. I really don't like to cheat the, I like to make everything real as if what it will really be like. Um, so, but they forced me to put a, a photo that we had taken. But the real view, you're looking at a hospital. So it's not like, it's not that luxe. <laughs> um, but this is the bedroom, uh, one of my other favorites. I, I had a great opportunity to just like set the mood here and just bring in this whole orange red feel and being able to go to the site and capture the background photography as well, this is, uh, is something I love to do because it all comes together. You go there earlier, you plan it out, you know, and in the end you can bring it back and make that the driving force for the mood of the image. Um, these are come some more images from the same project. Uh, this was this, the bedroom, but from another perspective, bringing in the photography aspect. And this is the uh, guest bathroom here. Um, other things that are really great to do is create, like creating the story, you know, putting small things like a little rubber ducky, um, turning the shower on so you can feel the steam. You know, those are things that you, make you feel like it's a real photo, but you don't, for me, I, you don't just look at the image, you think, oh, somebody's take, just about to take a shower. Um, and maybe the bed's not perfectly made. Oh, someone just got up this morning. Um, so it's all about the story for me. Uh, it's hard to sometimes tell stories without people. And this is one of the last images just showcasing that we can add people to them as well to bring this story of what type of community is this. Um, there's kids playing soccer. There's a lot of landscape design. Um, you know, there's, there's lighting on the numbers, people saying hi, drinking coffee different age groups, you know, it's all coming together. And this is the outward view, um, just showing the, you know, bicyclists and everything. 
Um, so these are my interns. Well, they're now in college, but um, this just just showing you guys more photos of, of what we were able to do. This is a Black Tech Week, helping them learn how to do videography and photography. And this is the Airbnb thing I mentioned before. I have a, an experience on there where travelers come around the world and they want a photo shoot. So I'm able to provide them with this uh, 30 minute shoot and edit in the next 30 minutes. Um, other videos that didn't play, uh, one more as well. So like I'm just coming full circle to let you guys know like because of creating a team and all the chaos has come together and it allows me to focus on everything that I, that I want and it's also, it's organized. Um, but this project here is, um, you can vote today, uh, 2018 Film Challenge for AIA, um, Black Architects in the Making is just a film about uh, talking about how architects are going into cities, teaching kids about the major of architecture because um, it's very underrepresented. Um, so I want to end on saying that I feel like you define your chaos. Um, you can determine if it's a bad or good thing, it's just like money, like money isn't bad or good. Um, but chaos, I believe it's the same, it's not bad or good. And you can define it for yourself. Um, I've shared with you my definition. And you know, I hope that you guys have, have a go and create your own as well. So. Thank you for your time, appreciate it. Thank you.